Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders and Simon Hurley. Once again, he has developed a wonderful collection, um, and it is called Metamorphosis. Yeah, say that 10 times. And it's got beautiful butterflies and florals, and those are the two that I am going to show you today um, when it comes to our project. I was so inspired. The butterflies are called Brilliant Butterflies, and the floral, as I'm looking through my paperwork, is called In Bloom. And I was very inspired by the cover um, of the in blooms and especially the butterfly. The moment I saw this butterfly, I knew that it was villainous potion, picked raspberry and saltwater taffy. And those are the colors that I used when it came to the butterfly. Right now you can see, this is how um, I get prepared for die cutting. Um, you all know that I am a huge fan of die cutting. I do a lot of it. Um, and I love to dig into my scraps and you can see that's what I did. So I'm planning out my pieces, making sure, <coughs> excuse me, they're taped down and all the different layers and where I want those layers to go. So, and this is exactly how I do it. I get them all up on the papers. I cut that section out. Um, and then I just continue to move forward. Once I have them all set up on my cardstock, um, I place them on my mat. In this case, I use my Spellbinders Platinum, uh, not the Platinum 6, because I was able to get them all die cut in one swipe. The colors I'm using for the background of the butterfly are, like I said, Saltwater Taffy, Picked Raspberry, and Villainous Potion. I'm using my smaller blending brushes um, because I don't need a large area. This is a scrap of a piece of watercolor paper that I am using, Canton XL watercolor paper, and I'm just making sure... Um, my layers are dark or, or thick, just a lot of color going on there. Villainish Potion has got to be my favorite. I, I Yes, it's purple. I know my hair's purple, but I just love that color. Once these three are blended, again, don't need a perfect blend because this is just the background that we are going to die cut. And then once that's done, the black part is going to go on top. I'm also now pulling in Rustic Wilderness and broken china. So the rustic wilderness is going on the bottom of the leaves. And I'm going to do this to all of these leaves just to give them some shading. When you see the picture of the in bloom die set, these colors are, are bold, they're rich, they're just different looking. And that inspired me to go with a very dark purple. I mean, that is just as dark as purple as you can get, which is awesome. Um, it's like an eggplant. Um, so going with those colors and then keeping, um, keeping my mind on picked raspberry, saltwater taffy. Those are the colors that I went for in the flowers. So really going off the rails here. I'm adding some vintage photo to one of my layers for the flower just to give a slight difference to that. I'm also adding it to the base of the yellow um, pollen that's going to come out of this flower. I'm adding the Villainish Potion to the bottom of the picked raspberry level. And that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to refer it to my oxide colors. Um, again, these were just scraps pieces. And then the center is very close to the saltwater taffy. Now, because of how, and the colors really do come through in this video, I do tone the saltwater taffy and the flower down a little bit when I add that villainous potion to it. I am going to use my liquid adhesive to um, get our butterfly shape on top of our cloud with all of our colors on it. Again, this is pretty detailed. So you're going to use dots, glue dots, so that too much does not seep out um, from your image that you've die cut. But just know we use uh, glue that does dry clear. So if some does, it's okay. I'm going to start laying my flowers now, placing that in the center. I just love this flower. I love this flower. <laughs> I just Now what's great is every layer, there is an outline that is embossed in the die set. So you know where to put your pieces 
um, as you continue to layer in. So we have our large one. Now I'm going to put the bottom of our one that is um, kind of it's tilted up or straight up where the other one we're looking head on for. Now I made a mistake here. I only butted up that gold section to that cut. There's a reason why that cuts there. That cut is there so that you can push that down into the cut. And you'll see that I do that. Um, I actually correct that boo-boo. Does it look bad? Absolutely not. And here's where I notice. So I'm going to peel it off. I'm going to make sure that cut line's there. Put a little bit of glue. Grab my tweezers. They are your best friend. And it fits perfectly inside there. At least that's how I put it together. And now we're going to get our panel set. So I wanted to look at how I can get this butterfly on there. And I always like to curl up the wings. I'm going to add some broken china to the back of this panel just to give it something. Again, just to give it something. Now, these flowers um, are going to be towards the bottom because, again, I just don't want them floating. You know, I don't want these at least floating. I have been known to do that. Uh <laughs> so we're going to place this and we're going to place that down in the bottom right hand corner. And then we're going to take our second one and just place that a little bit up. But I am going to bring in that stem. I want to get that in place or the, yeah, the stem. Um, so that I know where I should place that. And now we're just going to put in our butterfly in place. And since this is such a heavy weight cardstock, again, this was Canson XL watercolor paper. I don't have to add any um, double-sided um, double tape to those wings because they'll actually stay up there because of the creases that I put on it. Again, just filling in with the leaves, having fun with them, um, making them look like it's another stem coming off, taking my nail to smooth out that curve um, so that it's not so, I'm here changing the direction of all of the leaves and then just adding. Now I am making sure too um, that one leaf is going off because I will trim those edges off of that. I do like the flowers to, some, to most of the time go off the edge um, so that it's a continuous pattern that goes on. This will cover my entire front of my standard A2 size card base. Um, this is four and a quarter by five and a half and it is a top folding base and you can see just how much dimension I'm getting with that butterfly because of the shadows um, that we have. I've pulled in my Spellbinders Aqua Marine AB um, self-adhesive crystals. Now I do like to put glue down still. I know they're self-adhesive but they're going to fall off. <laughs> so I just add a little bit of glue, make sure that they're in place. They do come with four different sizes and there's always 108 in each of these packs and they are beautiful. Just added the perfect touch to the back of that card. I do hope you enjoyed today's project featuring the Simon Hurley Metamorphosis collection. It is a beautiful collection. He did it again. Absolutely. Um, all the products that I used will be listed down below. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below as well. If you haven't yet, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up to have you here part of my group. But remember, what is truly most important for me, you are creating art and it is beautiful art and it is unique to you. So always remember to be creative, guys, and enjoy. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Till then.